There are tons of ways to cheese your way through Elden Ring, but one of the hotter topics has always been glitches that grant free runes by bending game mechanics and most involve getting outside the map to do it. Today we're going to be taking a look at a handful of rune glitches that still work in patch 1.10 and for this video we'll give you an honest assessment at whether traditional methods are better in your first playthrough or if you're getting force fed a bunch of snake oil with the promise of 4 million runes per minute. So let's get ready to ride across the land, kicking up sand, tell Melina it's not easy being cheesy, and get after it. Our story begins within the confines of Laernia of the Lakes, and as you can see from the map footage, we'll be heading to the converted tower side of Grace, where you can find the earliest rune glitch that still works today. While it is the earliest way to buck the system, not only is it difficult, unless you have the reflexes of a 12 year old, it doesn't give you as many runes as you may think, or as some others have promised. In fact, it would take you quite some time to get 4 million runes. From the side of Grace, you'll ride just to the west, where you'll notice a few rock formations jutting out of the ground in the distance. For this method, you'll need to ride torn up the rock formation and jump off its highest edge to a spot on the cliff face. The first and second jumps are fairly easy, however, timing the final double jump to vault yourself out of the map is a bit tricky, and it may result in a few deaths before you get it right. Like many of the other jumping glitches, they're a bit time consuming since it can take anywhere from 45 seconds to a whole minute of falling while swinging your weapon to receive your first rune dump. This glitch isn't very lucrative since you'll only rake in 3,680 runes without any rune boosts running in the background, which, even if you accomplish this glitch flawlessly for an hour, only comes out to 110,400 runes. With the Golden Scarab and the Pickled Foulfoot running in the background, each two minute run will net you 5,728 runes, which would still only bring you to 171,840 runes per hour. No matter which way you spin it, traditional methods trump this glitch when it comes to rune farming. After receiving our measly rune dump, we'll open up the map and reset at the converted tower side of Grace. The truth of the matter is that you're better off heading to Lens Rise and utilizing the ball farm where you can bring in 7,864 runes every two minutes without consumables or the golden scarab. And if you're unfamiliar with the ball farm, we'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. Our next location is still within Laernia of the Lakes, and as you can see from the map footage, we'll be heading over to the Grand Lift of Dectus for the next available rune glitch that still works after patch 1.10. Once you materialize at the side of Grace, you can head west out of the lift, summon Torrent, and eventually make a 90 degree turn where you'll ride about 500 meters to the southeast. It is important to note that there's a Madness Tower in the vicinity, which will begin to cause madness as soon as you get close, and depending on your level, could end in a quick death. Taking the tower out is one of the best options to eventually get past it, however, if you haven't taken it out yet, utilizing the jump glitch will wipe it out in short order, forever. For this particular glitch, you'll need to be looking for a spirit spring that'll be assisting you in vaulting outside of the map for your plunge into the never-ending abyss. This one is just as tricky as the first one since you'll have to not only execute your jump at the very edge of the spring, but execute a well-timed double jump to get yourself past the fall damage plane. This particular method is unique in the fact that because the spirit spring is utilized, you don't have to spam your weapon to get it to work. While that is technically some good news, the bad news is that just like the first Laernia rune glitch, this one isn't really worth your time since the runes gained are awful no matter what rune boost equipment you have going. Each jump takes over 2 minutes to complete if you can get it to work every time, and for all that trouble, you're only getting 1671 runes per run. That being said, we'll wrap this up and head over to the next area where jump glitches may actually be worth your time if you get good with them. For our next feed of rune glitching mayhem, we'll be heading over to the Dynasty Mausoleum side of Grace within Mogwin's Palace. This area can be reached by either completing the Whiteface Vare quest or through a portal in the Consecrated Snowfields. If you aren't sure how to get here, we'll leave a link in the description just for you. This next jump glitch will start out by heading off the small drop to the northeast from the side of Grace and then summoning Torrent to head off tracing the cliffs to your right. For ease of explanation, we drop some breadcrumbs in the form of rainbow stones to lead to the area area as well as each foothold of the jumps. As you follow the game footage, it is important to note that for this particular jump demo, we cleared all the summoners from the area who summon giant skeletons that can dish out quite a bit of damage. However, once you get the jump pattern down, you can make it to the top without taking any damage at all. Mogwin's palace is fairly broken when it comes to getting outside of the map, so there are quite a few places you can get outside of it to glitch runes, but we'll just cover a few since the runes gained in each one of these areas is just about the same during your first playthrough. 
The hole in the map that we're taking you through is just one of many, but the concept is the same. Fall through the hole, execute a double jump, and swing your weapon for about a minute before receiving your runes. For this particular location, you can expect about 134,519 runes without any rune boosts running. And with each run taking about two minutes, if you crush it flawlessly for an hour, you can rake in about 4,035,570 runes. The max you can expect from this particular glitch per hour, if you're running the golden Scarab and the Gold Pickled Falfoot concurrently is 6,121,620 runes. So while it's not exactly 4 million runes every 30 seconds, it's not a terrible way to farm runes outside of the box for about an hour. This next glitch is just about a staple in this area since it's been around for quite some time. The ever famous tree jump glitch, which is still going strong after patch 1.10, is one of the easier methods once you get the timing down. As you can see from the game footage, it can be executed by traveling north and handrailing the cliffs to the left where you'll come across a large white tree growing into the cliff face. By executing some hitbox abuse on the tree, you can jump off its roots over to a small ledge on the cliff and continue jumping until you're up top. Once up top, you can execute a double jump off the side of the map in quite a few different areas to get it to work and then continue to swing away for a minute or so until you receive your runes. Jumping off this side of the map will net you 100,811 runes without any rune boost items running, which comes out to 3,024,330 runes per hour. The max you can expect with the Golden Scarab and a Pickled Foulfoot isn't 3 million runes every 30 seconds. It's really more along the lines of 168,654 runes per run, giving you a grand total of 5,059,620 per hour if no mistakes are made and your runs are on point. All that being said, the traditional bird farm still turns out to be a better deal as numbers go. The next rune glitch we'll be looking at is yet another way to use Torrent to find some footholds along the cliff face to get outside the map, and for this particular method, we've dropped some rainbow stones as a visual guide to help you through it. As you follow the game footage, if you find any value in this video so far, dropping a like really helps out the channel, and for more content just like this, you can click the subscribe button as well. After traveling to the east through the small summoner's field, we'll take a left towards the cliff face at the edge of the blood pools where you can start your jump spamming in a small nook to the north just behind some trees. Once up in the nook, you can jump outward to the rocky slope and then quickly back to the ledge where you can make your way up top. This method isn't rocket science, but it isn't easy either, and just like anything else, may take a bit of practice to get proficient with it. Once up top, there's a large hole nearby that you'll need to drop down into and execute a double jump out towards the center, then just swing your weapon continuously. If you don't double jump and you just fall through the hole, you'll die almost straight away, making the double jump a necessary evil. The numbers for this method are fairly similar to the first two methods, as well as the handful of other jump glitches you can use to get outside of the map that still work in this area. If you want us to cover those as well, just drop a comment in the comment section and we'll cover all the other glitch spots across the map. As you can see, without any rune boost help running in the background, you can expect 132,924 runes per run, and with each run taking about 2 minutes, you'll pull in a grand total of 3,987,720 runes, and that's if you did it repeatedly for an hour. The next chapter in this story takes place in the consecrated snowfields, and as you can see from the map footage, our start point will be in the town of Ordinia, which is located in the northwestern portion of the zone. It is important to note that in order to execute this glitch, you'll need to solve a puzzle within the town, opening up the portal to Mikola's Hallig Tree. As you can see from the game footage, you can ride Torrent a short distance to the large set of stairs that you'll head up in order to vault yourself out into the ether, using the cliff directly to the right of the portal. Once you've made it past the clipping plane, just swing away like the prior jump glitches. Since we've covered this method in the past, we won't get too far into the weeds with it, but this particular glitch can be executed in about a minute and 30 seconds. And as numbers go, if you push the envelope on this one with the Golden Scarab and the Pickled Foulfoot, you can pull off 6,313,592 runes per hour during your first playthrough. When comparing the numbers, you can outpace the bird farm when it comes to runes per hour by a little over 100,000, making this glitch slightly better than one traditional method. The next one we'll be covering is the Yellow Annex Tunnel Rune Glitch, which as you can see from the map footage is down towards the southern zone wall of the consecrated snowfields and can be discovered pretty easily. 
Like the last method, this particular spot is yet another easy one as jumping glitches go, with the only drawback being that you'll need to take an elevator ride during every run, which gets pretty annoying after a while. You can use this jump site if you haven't yet unlocked the Town of Ordinia's puzzle, giving you access to that portal jump glitch, but honestly, the numbers here aren't that great. You're actually better off using one of the Mogwin's Palace jumps or the bird farm on the Palace Approach ledge. As you can see from the game footage, all you really need to do is double jump as far as possible off the rock to get past the clipping plane and then swing repeatedly till you receive your runes. For this one, we'll skip all the egghead charts, but after crunching the numbers here, even with the golden scarab running and eating a pickled foul foot every single run, the max you can expect here is around 4,554,000 runes per hour, making other sites far more lucrative during your first playthrough. Next, we'll head over to the Deep Root Depths, which is an optional area in the game that most players miss when cruising at top speed through their first playthrough, and as you can see from the map footage, we'll be starting at the Deep Root Depths side of Grace near the Finger Reader. As you follow the game footage, the inspiration for this particular method came from Glitch Unlimited, who covers everything glitch related in games and in the Elden Ring space has pioneered a lot of these methods. While he uses a rather surgical approach by jumping off a thin branch right out in front, we're going to be using a more blunt force trauma method to force ourselves up the tree using some good old fashioned jump spamming in an area that's just to the left. The real idea in this case is to get up the tree to the longest branch that overhangs the depths and then double jump out past the clipping plane. If done correctly, you'll fall through the ether in the usual jump glitch style and swing your weapon until you receive your runes. The truth is, is that with all the glitches available, there's no magical spot where you'll quickly collect 800 million runes, even in NG plus 4 where the max you'll get from the best rune glitches is 500,000 runes. But they are fun to try and pull off for a few runes. That being said, after falling for a minute, you can collect your prize, and armed with an arsenal of places to get outside of the map, you'll be all set to level your character to new heights and head off in search of some of the best weapons in the land. If you aren't really 100% sure where to find the best weapons in the game, you can click the video on the screen and it should light the way for you. Stay safe out there, Tarnished, and as always, good hunting.